Hey class, how's it going today? Uh, what we're going to do today is give a very, very short talk on something that was in the textbook and that I put a link. It's Frederick Jackson Turner's Frontier Thesis. Uh, in 1893, a historian named Frederick Jackson Turner wrote a very short piece. It was giving a speech. It was a much, it's a short excerpt of a much longer work he wrote called The Frontier. But in this short piece called The Significance of the Frontier in American History, he is going to lay out a framework or an idea that is that we're still talking about now, 123 years later in history. Uh, it's a very powerful idea. It's a very powerful piece. It's a very strong argument. It's also a hotly debated argument on how much truth there is to it. I have quick apologies about this video. I have to film this uh, with reverse camera, and so. You're getting a mirror image, and the things I have written on the board right there, they were talked about in the piece. Uh, of course, coming in backwards. At the top is individualism, then democracy, freedom, and finally independence, right? Um, issues that were talked about in both the textbook and in the piece. Now, technically, you do not have to read uh, the frontier uh, thesis. You don't have to read uh, the significance of the frontier in American history. Uh, for the class, but if you'd like to, as we're discussing it, it might uh, be in your best interest to go ahead and, and go through it. It's not very long, it's about eight pages. Um, it's very difficult language. It's written back in 1893, and people talked differently back then. They wrote differently. Um, he uses very, very long sentences, very, uh, he assumes that you have some uh, basis in history. He talks about things like germ theory and all that that are not uh, really applicable, nor we're going to go into. Uh, but nonetheless, you can you know, slog your way through it, and you might find it uh, worthwhile. It's actually an interesting piece that he's talking about there. But what I want to do today is I want to get into a little bit of the debate. What is he really talking about, and, you know, what possible problems might there be with this idea, right? So let's go back to the core of what it says. And the textbook uh, did an okay job on this. It's try the textbook's trying to explain very complicated things in a very short amount of time. It's trying to condense it down, and it misses a lot of the points uh, Turner was making, and it gets quite a few of them correct as well, right? Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go through Turner's thesis kind of backwards. We're going to talk about everything he talks about and try to create his argument, which is very short, uh, through that. Basically, what Turner was saying through that entire, uh, through his entire piece, his article, is that out on the frontier, America had all this free, untouched, unclaimed land, these frontiers. And out on those frontiers, is where concepts such as American individualism, ideas of democracy, ideas of personal freedom and independence were born, right? Um, he's saying that basically people moved out to new lands, and there when they were on these new lands, they changed, right? They were not the same people they were before, and they had to be rebuilt, uh, rebuilt again. But their society started to spread, right? And then some people left that society. They moved out to a new frontier. And there they got broken down again. And there they were reborn again. But they were now something completely different, right? And at the end of that, he says you equate all that, and this is where we get these ideas of individualism, these ideas of democracy, these ideas of freedom, these ideas of independence, right? So let's take a look first at what he's saying has happened. And now some of this requires you to perhaps had a little bit of History 1301, although not too much. If you haven't had 1301, it's no big deal. You probably some of these concepts are, 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 good, are well known enough. If not, well, you know, get a crash course in it right now, right? So let's go back, all the way back before, uh, before 1607, right? And the first Europeans coming over and colonizing the New World. And since we're focusing on United States history and Turner's writing about the American uh, frontier, right? We're going to largely talk about the British, right? And so, you know, in 1607, Jamestown in Virginia is founded, right? It was founded by people from England, wealthy people from England coming over, who lived in London and lived in, uh, in, in, in Essex and Sussex and basically areas of, of England. They came over and they created their colony of Jamestown. Further north, you know, a decade later, right, you have the, the Pilgrims of Plymouth Rock, right? And you have, and, if, and if shortly after that, you have the creation of Boston, founded by these Puritans. But largely, these English people who are used to an English lifestyle, English heritage, English culture, English survival, right, are coming over, and what do they find? Now, according to Turner, what they find is unclaimed 
free land, a frontier, full of trees and rocks and everything. And you question, what good is it being a Londoner in the forests of Virginia? See, back in London, you knew how to survive. You knew how, you, know, you knew where to go to get your food. You knew where, where to work. You knew how to make money. But now you're thrust into a new life, right? And you have to start all over again. Start chopping down the trees, start building your houses, start sowing the fields and planting crops, right? Up in Massachusetts, right? You have to adapt to that lifestyle. Can't grow tobacco there, so you gotta find other ways to live. And what happens is, over time as society develops, these English that came over, you question, are they actually English anymore, right? Their lifestyle is completely different. Their way of survival is completely different. Their day-to-day -day activities, their ideas of entertainment, everything has changed because they have come to a frontier and started life over again. But things built up. You have the creation of Boston. You have the creation of Richmond, Virginia, and Jamestown, right? Caribbean settlers move into the Carolinas. You get Charleston, South Carolina. You get New York City. And over time, you have civilization. You have settlement. You have Bostonians, you have New Yorkers, you have Virginians and Carolinians, right? And so, and are they European necessarily anymore? What he's basically saying is when you move to a frontier and get broken down, you change. And when you build up again, you don't build up the same as you were before and therefore the people identify differently. But what happens after that? So initially, early on, and up until the American Revolution, right? The British colonies were small, basically the Atlantic coast. You know, colonists weren't allowed to cross over the Appalachian Mountains until after the Revolution, really. Right? But then, after America went to this revolution, you start to see a wave of Americans moving west into the Ohio River Valley in the Northwest Territory, into Kentucky and into areas like Missouri, down into Louisiana and Mississippi, Alabama. And as they come over, what do they find again? Another frontier. Free untapped, unclaimed land, but now they come over as Bostonians, they come over as New Yorkers, they're coming over as Virginians. And what happens to them when they arrive in Kentucky, when they arrive in Ohio, when they arrive on the banks of the Mississippi River in Missouri? When they get broken down again, and they build up. And when they build up, are they necessarily Bostonians anymore? Are they Virginians anymore? Are they uh, yeah, South Carolinians anymore? Maybe there's something different. And then we had more frontiers, and Turner goes into a lot of these frontiers, right? Um, you might remember from the reading in 1849, in the, the gold rush, right? The Overland Trail. And now you have the, the settlement wagons going west, right? Up into California, into Oregon. You have ranchers moving out with the Homestead Act and things like that, moving out into the Midwest, moving into the areas of New Mexico, into Spanish-speaking lands. You have people moving into Texas, if you might remember if you had 1301 about the Texas Revolution. And there, they come as say, people from St. Louis. They come as, uh, as uh, Ohioans. They come as Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky? Kentuckers? I don't know. Uh, they, they come from Kentucky, right? They, 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 and they end up uh, moving out there. And what happens again? They get broken down. Now, what's the point of this? Um, what Frederick Jackson Turner is trying to argue here is something that I'll get by way of analogy. Right, um, and in all of this, this analogy, I've kind of just well explained, but it sometimes helps put it in a personal. Imagine if you left wherever you live. Now, a lot of you live in Houston, but some, not all of you. I've read, uh, I've read your, uh, you're welcome here. Some of y'all are in San Marcos. I think maybe a couple of y'all are up in Dallas, right? Um, Tomball area, Woodlands, wherever it might be. You know how to live in that area. You live there. You know where to go get your food at the grocery store, right? You know how to get to work. You know how to make money. You know how to get to your school. You know how to get onto the internet. What happens if you move to northern Alaska? You're like, you know, fuck this, I'm gone. I'm going to go up to the frontier of northern Alaska. And there you head out. Now think about the first things you have to do, right? First, you just need to survive. What good is it being from Houston in northern Alaska? Everything there is completely different, right? Everything there is, uh, it, well, it's cold, I'm sure, all right? You don't know where to go to get your food. You don't know how to make money or how, how, how to live out there. You have to relearn those things. So you get broken down to the basics. You start chopping down trees and building your houses. 
You start plowing the fields and start growing whatever. And okay, it's northern Alaska, probably can't grow too many crops, so let's not take this analogy too far. But you start, you know, growing crops, right? Fucking grizzly bears coming after you from all over, and you get to stab them, kill them off, right? You know, when you start wearing their heads for a hat and all that. So, what happens over the course of time, right? 10 years, 15 years, you've lived up in northern Alaska. And you step out of your house one day and you look at it. The house that you built, right? And you look at your crops. Those are your crops. You did it. It was all you. You put it there. You made it. You created it. The grizzly bears paying you respect now, man. They're not going to mess with you, right? You have their head on pikes or something, right? It's there. How do you feel at that point, right? A strong individual, very independent, right? But what else about this? Everything that you did, you created yourself. So imagine one day there's a knock on the door. And it's the U.S. government coming by. An official from Washington, D.C. And this federal agent says, comes to you and says, Hey, look at this. Look at you up in northern Alaska. Man, you're doing great. Got a nice house. You got these fields right. You know, you really got things under control. But uh, you've been doing it all wrong, you know. You see those crops you're growing there? Ah, oh, those are an invasive species in this ecosystem, right? You, you can't grow those. Okay, you got, you got, rip those up. They're gonna, you're gonna harm the ecosystem, right? Uh, you, your, your, your house here, beautiful house. Yeah, you haven't paid property taxes in 25 years. You know, you're living on government land. You know, this part belongs to the United States. You gotta pay your property taxes. Oh, and those grizzly bears you killed? Endangered species, yeah. We're gonna have to find you for that, right? How would you feel about that? And actually, if you technically look at those laws, there's really nothing wrong with those laws. We probably shouldn't plant invasive species in an ecosystem, right? You probably, unless you just hate animals, you probably shouldn't just go around killing endangered species, right? Um, and yes, we, I mean, nobody likes paying taxes, but taxes are required for a government to run, so we should probably have some expectation to pay taxes. So why are we upset when the government knocks on our door after living out in northern Alaska by ourselves for 25 years? on the frontier. Well, was the government there when you were fighting off the grizzly bears? Was the government helping you when you were building your house? Was the government there when during the hard times? No, it seems like they're coming after the fact and saying, yeah, you're doing it great, but you've been doing it all wrong, now do what we say. And what develops to you, all those laws would have made sense when you lived back in Houston, when you lived in San Marcos, when you lived in Dallas, when you lived wherever, right? They don't make sense to you anymore in northern Alaska. You're a different person. You have changed. You have different ideas about freedom. You have different ideas about your role in government and democracy. You yourself are different. So what's the point here? What's Turner's point then, right? And this isn't just Turner. Turner doesn't go this much into detail, but people that, I guess you can call them Turnerians, people that really support Turner's thesis, their argument is basically this, right? that it's the frontier that creates these things that we uniquely identify as American. Marca, right? Marcan ideas. Well, are American ideas different than ideas in the rest of the world? Right? Is America somehow a different nation than China, than Peru, than Germany, than, you know, uh, Nigeria? Are they different nations? Or are people just people, you know, and they're just living in a nation? Or are there actual characteristics that are different about these nations? Turner would argue, yes, there are, right? The main point that Turner was trying to explain is this concept in American history that some historians prescribe to, quite a lot actually, um, and some do not, right, called American exceptionalism. That America is kind of the exception to the rule. That for whatever reason, America's just different. America is not the same as other places, right? And if you believe that, well, you need to explain, well, why is America different? According to Turner, why is America different? Why are these things different in America than elsewhere? Because America had access to this frontier, this untapped free land where basically white Europeans moved out to, got broken down, built up, and became something different. Their identity changed compared to their roots Right? And this happened over and over again to build a unique American identity, right? Or a bunch of unique American identities, I think is more fair. Um, 
plausible, possible, certainly an interesting argument. Uh, but as, once again, the textbook said in a short little paragraph, a bunch of new historians, uh, Western historians, are question turners of thesis. Um, I don't know why they put that in quotes. It's actually, you know, they're, it's a legit, uh, it's a legit question about Turner's thesis, uh, because Turner, if you notice, if you just, if you have read the piece or if you just listen to what I say, there's a couple things we can question about Turner. First off, was this land free? Was this land unpopulated, untapped, undeveloped land? See, Turner's leaving out a pretty large group of people when he says that. that there were people here before the Europeans came over. Right, um, and even after the European came, Europeans came over. It wasn't just, you know, Northern Europeans. It wasn't just primarily the, the British, right, and uh, and, the, and other groups that settle in America, like the German and the French and the Irish and such. It wasn't just them. Down in the South and the Southwest, you have large communities of Spanish-speaking people, and then of course the major group, right, Native Americans. There, you know, Native Americans have been decimated by this point, largely through the diseases of the Columbian Exchange, but there were still large groups of Native Americans all throughout there. And to say that this was unfree, or the free, untapped land for America's taking is, well, that's highly debatable. And all of these people moving out to the frontier, where did they learn how to live? Or how did they learn how to live, I should say? Well, largely from Native Americans who already lived out there, or had been pushed out there decades previously, and had redeveloped their life out there. And he makes no mention of that. Um, and partially this is a fault, uh, or not now, this is partially a fault of history in the late 19th century because if you ask what American history was to Frederick Jackson Turner, Frederick Jackson Turner's idea of American history would be quite simple. American history is a story of white Protestants, white European Protestants, basically. Uh, in our modern understanding of United States history, uh, we do not look at it that way, right? Uh, and or at least we shouldn't, I don't think. Um, American history is not the history of people of European descent. American history is a story of a whole bunch of different races and ethnicities. And to make a great point about this, well, take a look at the class role. Take a look at the discussion board and all the introductions, right? Or maybe take a look at yourself <laughs> and that, uh, of what is American. Right, and what stories are actually being told here? Um, we have students in here from Asia, right? I say uh, from Vietnam, from Thailand, right? Uh, from China. We have students here um, from Africa. We have students here from uh, Spanish-speaking countries or, or Latin America, right? We have students here from from Europe as well. We have students here from all over, and we're all in America. And so if the story of American history is just the story of white Europeans uh, marching westward, then I, I, I think you're doing a disservice in not telling the whole story. Nonetheless, does that mean we reject Turner's ideas completely? Well, I don't know. It's food for thought anyways. Is this where these ideas of American value came from? American identity? American perspective? Is America a different nation? Are we the same as other nations? We're just you know, people just living on a land, or are, is there something different? There's something uniquely American about America, right? Uh, I have no answer to these. Uh, well, I do, but uh, I just not my place to say. It's the whole idea of this is to give you a question that you might want to consider, right? Uh, what I'm going to do after I post this and after everybody's taking the quiz is I'm going to put this up on the discussion board uh, and question this idea uh, about Turner. If you're just worried about for the exam and you're just like, okay, well, fuck it, I mean, what do I need to get to grade? Well, okay, we will have a couple of questions on the exam about this discussion, right, um, that I'm talking about, not necessarily from the reading. But nonetheless, uh, you know, uh, I think these ideas are good to discuss because they're going to get you in sync for when I post the first argumentative essays, where basically you're going to do the same thing. I'm going to propose a question like this. Is there something like American exceptionalism? Right? Use Turner and use what you learn from the textbook to make an argument. That's not going to be a question. I'm just saying something like that. Right? And then you show one side of it. You give me your perspective, your opinion on that. Anyways, I'll post this up on the board and shortly after, hopefully I can finish it as soon as I finish this video, I'm going to post the next video on uh, industrialization in the United States and the creation of a consumer economy. All right, talk to you later.